comprehensive exposition of what is in that treaty. Pascal Donoghue from Fine Gael is here, your Vice Chair of the European Affairs Committee, and Sinn Féin Senator David Conan. First of all, we had four economists there, two, four, two again, but the rules, I mean, when you look at those, is it possible to grow the economy and have those rules to abide by? Well, what's vital to happen is that any economy does reduce its debt because the higher the debt, that means the less money can go into public services, into our hospitals and schools. And what the treaty here is creates a framework within which a country can reduce its debt, but most importantly of it all, it creates a capacity, a safety net for our country to borrow money in the event of us not being able to get it off anybody else. And in return for us accessing that capacity, there are rules <coughs> that will uh, allow us to do and help us to do what we will want to do anyway, which is put our Irish taxes into paying for Irish public services as opposed to putting it into the debt payments. And what about one of the economists' views there, Pascal, that you know you can't starve your way out of the <clears throat> famine? Well, indeed you can't. Uh, but at the same time, no economy has ever managed to grow continuously or sustainably without reducing its debt to sustainable levels. And what we need to do is do both. We need to take our debt levels down because if we can't borrow, if no one will lend us money, no one's going to invest within our country to create the jobs that people need. And what this will do is create the framework for debt to come down while providing the country with a safety net. OK, Senator David Cullinan, you heard Tony Foley there, for instance, saying these rules already exist. Well, Tony also said that it was a failed, uh, flawed treaty. Um, and many economists who are also advocating a yes vote have nothing good to say about this treaty because they know that the, this treaty is simply bad economics. It will enshrine austerity into Irish law. Pascal talks about funding for schools and hospitals. We've seen since 2008 huge amounts of money taken out of schools and hospitals. And if this treaty is passed, we are going to see €6 billion Euro more cuts post-2015. What will that mean? More cuts to schools and hospitals, more cuts to transport, more cuts to local government, more taxes direct and indirect on the people of this country. The treaty simply will not work. It's flawed at its heart and it doesn't deal with the real problems in Europe because Pascal talks about the debt levels. Yes, it does have a debt break, but it forces Ireland to pay back debt which is not ours in the first place. And it forces us to pay it back quicker and faster than our domestic okay, economy Pascal, can take. Come back and... Well, I think people who are looking at home at this uh, know what it is for a trauma for our country to go through a situation where it can't borrow. And the question that we have to ask here is, the, is the cutbacks, the pain that people are facing, would that get better or worse? if we're in a situation where we cannot borrow. If we end up in a situation where we cannot access a bailout fund in the future, and I hope we won't, but we can't see into the future, and if we also end up in a situation where we can't borrow off the financial markets, is that going to create a vista in which people's hopes and in which people's needs from our society can be delivered? What it offers instead is a repeat of what we've gone okay, through, Colin, which we must avoid. Well, Pascal and his party and the Labour Party tell us that they will get Ireland back into the bond markets in two years. Eamon Gilmore said at his conference that Ireland will be back in the bond markets in two years. And on the other hand, they are saying that we may need access to the ESM funding. If we do, that will mean Ireland will need a second bailout and the whole logic of the first bailout will have failed because of the austerity uh, measures. But this argument that we will not be able to access the funding is absolute nonsense. The Taoiseach of this country has the ability to veto the uh, ESM treaty. That's the reality. It is in our hands. It is in the gifts of the Irish government. Are they going to lock us out of that funding? I don't believe that they okay, come will. Back Can I make two points in relation to that? Let me read out the treaty. It says here, they're pointing out that the granting of assistance in the framework of new programmes under the ESM, which is a new bail bailout mechanism, will be conditional on the ratification of this treaty. But That's what, what the what treaty Pascal says here. Say, now, the second point in relation to this here is in relation to the role of this funding here, if we were to need it. If you're looking to get a mortgage on your home, it's easier to get a mortgage on your home if you have insurance on the home in the first place. And what that treaty does is provide insurance, which I hope we will never need, but if we do need it, okay. it's there for us. What the doesn't tell us is that the ESM treaty is still not a done deal. Only one country, Portugal, has adopted the treaty. And if we are to 
uh, adopt the treaty. We have a veto because we can uh, veto the amendment to Article 136 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, which of course Pascal knows. The only reason why uh, that clause, and it's in the preamble, not in any of the articles of the treaty, the only reason why that was entered into the Fiscal Compact Treaty is to get people to focus on the ESM Treaty, which is not what we are voting on. We are voting on the Fiscal Compact Treaty, the Austerity Treaty, which will lead to more cuts to hospitals and schools and more taxes, direct and indirect, on working families who've given as much as they can give. It simply won't work. It's bad economics, what David Begg said. It's socially and economically wrong, and people should reject it. And the question is, is without access to a fund like this in the future, is access. this going to create the certainty that we need? The treaty lays out very clearly that the treaty has to be passed in order for this conditionality to be given. The point that's David making is here regarding criticising these conditions. Irish taxpayers' money is Can going to be going into this fund in the future. Can you confirm that we have Irish a veto on the ESM treaty? If Irish taxpayers' money is going into this fund in the future, Irish taxpayers themselves will want conditions regarding how their money is spent abroad. What about the abroad. question he's asking? Because they've been talking about that Well, in relation, to the setting up, in relation to this treaty, first of all, only 12 countries need to have it passed in order for it to be implemented. In relation to the setting up of the ESM, which we're referring to here, 90% of people who are participating in it have to have it passed. And they're the facts. Okay. And what David here come is, is confusing here is the idea of setting up the fund with the idea of okay, accessing the fund. There, no. The reality is this, that the Irish government have a veto on the setting up of the ESM treaty. And what Pascal and what his government are trying to do is scare people into voting for a bad treaty. Isn't it interesting that even those who are putting forward the argument that we should vote for the treaty cannot find a single good thing to say about this treaty because the economics of the treaty are flawed and bad. And what this treaty will mean if it is passed, is more austerity. And it will tie the hands of future Irish governments, Pascal, and their ability to be able to borrow. Because it does not make any sense to restrict the ability of member states to borrow. You would not ask any small to medium-sized business out there to operate under the very strict rules which were being asked okay. to op I mean, operate under. I think the sentence, under. Pascal. Uh, all the, any economist who's weighing this up will look at the pros and cons of it. The balance of economists that are looking at this saying that access to funding for the future okay. is essential for stability of our economy. Okay. Well, That's look, what this treaty delivers. Um, Pascal Dunham, thanks both very much Good for man. coming in tonight. Thank you. Richard.